The queen lived in a beautiful castle. She had a daughter whom she dreamed of. The child had black hair and snow white skin. Therefore, they named her Snow White. The queen soon died. The king did not grieve for a long time. A year later, he brought a new queen to the palace. She was beautiful but angry. The woman brought a magic mirror with her. Every day she admired her reflection in him and asked him the same question, who is the most beautiful in the world? The mirror has always told only the truth. Therefore, it honestly praised the beauty of the queen, and the woman beamed with happiness. Snow White grew, and every year her beauty blossomed brighter. And now, once again, speaking to the mirror, the queen heard in response that now she is not the most beautiful in the world, but Snow White. The queen was not going to endure this in her own palace. She ordered her faithful servant to lead the princess into an impenetrable thicket and kill. But the servant could not, even for the sake of the queen, kill the sweet girl. He brought the princess into a dark forest and let her go. And he himself returned to the castle and told the queen that he had followed her order. For a long time, the princess wandered through the forest, along the way she was helped by all kinds of forest inhabitants. Snow White was very kind to them and therefore they became strong friends. In the evening, the princess accidentally stumbled upon a small house. She went into it and saw that there was no one in the house. The table was set for seven people, and there were seven cots in the bedroom. And everything in this house was very small. Therefore, Snow White realized that seven little people live here. After a long and difficult journey, she lay down on one of the beds and fell fast asleep. The seven dwarfs returned home late at night. They were greatly surprised by the appearance of an unexpected guest. Sleeping Snow White was so charming that the dwarves decided to let her sleep and did not wake her. Morning has come. Snow White woke up, saw the seven dwarfs, and was scared. But they were affectionate with her, and the girl told about her misfortune. They immediately liked Snow White, and the dwarfs invited her to stay with them. Moreover, she agreed to take care of the house cooking, washing and cleaning. Every morning the gnomes went to the mountains to mine gold and precious stones and returned late at night. Leaving for work, they warned Snow White to be afraid of the evil stepmother and not open the door to strangers. At this time, the queen, as usual, went to the secret room to talk to the magic mirror. But the mirror suddenly said that she was not the most beautiful in the world, but Snow White. That the princess is still alive and lives with the gnomes in the house. The queen became very angry and decided to deal with Snow White herself. She went to a secret room and cooked a poisonous venomous apple there. It was very beautiful on the outside, but if someone ate even a piece, he would certainly die. When the apple was ready, the queen changed into an old merchant and came to the house of the dwarfs. Seeing the sweet old woman, Snow White felt sorry for her. She did not suspect anything and left the house. The old woman treated the girl to a ripe apple and said that if she eats this apple, she will remain young and beautiful forever. Snow White believed her, and as soon as she bit the apple, she fell down dead and stopped breathing. The contented queen went to the palace. In the evening, the dwarves returned from work and saw Snow White lying on the ground. She was not breathing. They sobbed so loudly and lamented that their cry was heard by the handsome prince, who was hunting in the forest nearby. It became interesting to him what kind of howl arose that scared away all the animals. And when the prince found the house of the dwarfs, he saw Snow White. She was so beautiful that the young prince immediately fell in love with her. He persuaded the dwarves to take her with him to the castle, because there he has doctors who can cure Snow White. The dwarfs allowed it. Then the prince ordered his servants to carry the princess on their shoulders. And when they were carrying her, it happened that the servants stumbled over some bush, and from the concussion a piece of a poisonous apple fell out of Snow White's mouth, and she woke up. 
Seeing the young prince, the girl also fell in love with him and agreed to marry him. They also invited their wicked stepmother to the wedding. Out of anger that Snow White is still alive, and that now a long and happy life awaits her, the queen broke the magic mirror and never looked at it again. Not having stayed at home for a week, Lemuel Gulliver set off on another trip on the ship Good Hope. But after a few days the ship was overtaken by the pirates. Oh, no. They hijacked the ship and tied up the entire crew. Oh, no. Gulliver tried to escape, so as punishment, the pirates dropped him in a boat to the will of the waves and winds. Oh, no. For a long time Gulliver circled the open ocean until he noticed land on the horizon. He swam to the shore and began to survey the land. What? Suddenly a huge shadow oh, covered no. the sun. Raising his head, the astonished Gulliver saw a large island soaring in the sky. Exhausted by hunger and thirst, Gulliver began to scream, waving his hat, hoping that the inhabitants of the island would notice him. Then the natives took pity on Gulliver and lowered the stairs so that he could climb the island. When Gulliver climbed the stairs, he found a crowd of very strange locals in front of him. Their heads were tilted to the right or left, with one eye looking inward and the other upward. And at each noble person there was a servant who patted the owner on the lips or ears, distracting him from his thoughts. Gulliver received a warm welcome. Nice. He was fed in the palace and even had a tour of the island. So, Gulliver realized that the earth soars in the sky due to a huge magnet, and at the base there is a giant diamond. <laughs> okay. But life in the flying kingdom was boring, so Gulliver soon returned to Earth. Before his eyes was a devastated country where local residents, dressed in rags, were starving. As it turned oh, no. out, these people did everything in their lives the other way around. They built a house starting from the roof. Oh, no. They tried to get the sun's rays from cucumbers. What? And the artists were blindly mixing oh, paint no. for paintings. Local scientists did not understand why words are needed in a language. After all, to everyone who began to argue, they simply cut out the brains and swapped them. Gulliver's surprise knew no bounds, and he hastened to leave the island. Going to neighboring lands, Gulliver found himself in the kingdom of darkness and gloom. Trembling with fear, he continued his journey. Suddenly a ghost appeared from the darkness. In fright, Gulliver tried to hide, but the spirit noticed him. He beckoned the traveler with a gesture, and Gulliver had no choice but to follow the ghost. Very soon they reached a large castle, and Gulliver was invited to a reception with the king. Walking through the castle, Gulliver saw hundreds of ghosts who cooked dinner, cleaned and guarded the chambers. It turned out that this country is ruled by a powerful sorcerer who can raise the dead and all the living dead serve him. What? The wizard received <laughs> Gulliver with honors. And to entertain such a rare guest, he began to revive anyone whom Gulliver asked. They were great warriors, sages, and even primitive people. But tired of wandering, Gulliver thanked <laughs> okay. the wizard and soon left the kingdom of darkness. He went to the nearest port, where he hoped to board a ship bound for England. Walking around the port, Gulliver immediately attracted attention. A foreigner in such places was a rarity, and therefore Gulliver oh, was mistaken no. for a spy, seized and urgently taken to the local ruler. The foreigner was immediately found guilty. And as punishment, Gulliver had to crawl across the throne room on his stomach, licking the floor in his path. This was the custom. At the end, Gulliver bowed to the monarch seven times, hitting his head on the floor. Then the governor looked thoughtfully at Gulliver, and then nice. pardoned him. Miraculously freed Gulliver ran out of the castle, and went to the nearest port, where he boarded an English ship. I must say that Gulliver never returned to these parts. Mommy.